Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we're looking at Cooler Master's tried and true Hyper 212 Plus CPU cooler. This one's been out for a while and is often recommended for new system builds, but I've never really latched onto it. I always felt there was something better available, and for the purposes of this benchmark, we pitted the older Hyper 212 Plus against some of NZXT's newer Respire series coolers, which are priced within 10 bucks of the Hyper 212 Plus and are similar in design and sizing. So let's hit the specs first and then dive into thermal testing and build quality. We also ran a test to see if multiple fans were worth considering, so stick around for that. The Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus is fully compatible with all modern socket types, including LGAs dating back to 775 and AMD dating back to AM2, including FM1. The cooler uses an aluminum and copper direct touch cold plate, which boasts a smooth finish for better thermal conduction from the CPU to the heat pipes. There are four heat pipes at 6mm each, as opposed to the Respire T40's four 8mm pipes or the Respire T20 single 8mm and dual 6mm pipes. The 212 also includes one of Cooler Master's flower petal blade fans, which is pulse width modulation enabled and ranges from 600 to 2000 RPM, rating at roughly 21 to 77 CFM and 13 to 32 decibels. All of these are fairly reasonable and nothing really exceptional nor nothing that's bad per se. It's, it's definitely uh, slightly above average. In terms of bearings, the fan uses a cheaper sleeve bearing, so it will grow louder with age and does not fail as gracefully as other bearings might. I suspected that NZXT and Cooler Master use the same, or at least a very similar supplier for their heatsink component, given the very, very close design. The 212 is firmly in between the T20 and T40 in terms of overall surface area of the aluminum heatsink, but uses its direct touch flatter cold plate as a major selling point. Meanwhile, the T40 and T20 are rougher on the bottom side with larger pipes. Speaking strictly to quality, the cooler is mostly average but has a few points I was unsatisfied with. The 212's additional fan mounting bracket snapped upon the first use and installation and it was, I mean, it just snapped. I just screwed it in like normally, and one side snapped, so I was pretty uncomfortable leaving my my screw floating around in there, and, uh, of course, the snappage, we'll call it, resulted in a bit of vibration with the fan once installed. The installation process as a whole is more obnoxious than it needs to be, and it is fairly standard procedure, if a bit overly complex, but I did find some of the uh, 212's mounting bolts in my model to have threading issues on the front side, which meant I had to reinstall the backplate entirely with each modification on the motherboard side of the cooler. So something as simple as swapping thermal paste was made minutes longer just by the fact that I had to reinstall the backplate. Let's talk thermals. You can read our full testing methodology in the review linked in the description below if you'd like to know how we actually test these. The Hyper 212 Plus operated toward the bottom of our pack when using stock thermal compound hovering at 2.5 Celsius warmer than NZXT's Respire T40 cooler and 7.5 Celsius warmer than Tunique's Tower 120 Extreme excuse me, cooler, which is priced at $65, so it is about twice the price of the Hyper 212 Plus. The Respire T40 is priced at around 40 bucks, so that gives you some perspective there. The 212 Plus is still nearly 20C cooler than the stock unit's thermals, so it's it's definitely nothing to ignore. Still a good cooler. With controlled 5.3 watts per meter Kelvin thermal compound, the Hyper 212 Plus is dead last for aftermarket coolers, and I found that Adding an additional fan resulted in zero noticeable improvement. In fact, the improvement was within margin of error and was less than one Celsius difference. This is likely because the thermal dissipation potential is maximized by an already efficient single fan design. So don't waste your money on a second fan for the 212 Plus. Not to mention that the, the mounting bracket issues I had, so I really don't recommend a second fan for it. On the other hand, the Respire T40 saw a noticeable improvement with a second fan installed, but it is also larger in breadth and width, so it makes sense because there's more aluminum to be cooled, so it can more efficiently utilize that extra CFM airflow. And finally, here's a value chart for you. This is calculated with price over delta T using the stock cooler as a baseline. This chart is mostly useful for those looking for a value optimized cooling solution, who uh, people who aren't necessarily interested in the best overclocking option but just want good cooling for the price. 
We use all stock paste for this chart, seen as that's what ships with the units, and additional fans are assumed to cost $8. The T20 has the worst value, cooling at a uh, with a delta of 13.4 C and costing $2.3 per degree. The Hyper 212 cools delta 20.5 C and costs roughly $1.85 per degree. Meanwhile, the Tunique 120 cools an impressive Delta 28C, but costs $2.24 per degree. So that is a decent look at value for you. Overall, the Hyper 212 Plus is still a reasonable cooler. It's just not the best at the low end anymore, and I'd, I'd really at this point recommend the T40 over the Hyper 212 Plus any day of the week. At best, the 212 Plus is $10 cheaper and several degrees warmer, but at worst, it has a limited upgrade capacity seen as the thermal dis- dissipation potential is already fully saturated so the extra 10 bucks is fully worth the upgrade ability of the t40 and that is all for this time so i will see you all next time peace